mic. And we're live. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com. Even though Steve Rosen said, who is going to watch this on Facebook right now? You may be listening to this later on. But um, I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders, people who inspire me, um, past guests. You know, you should check out other episodes. Ron Popeil. If no one's heard of Ron Popeil, you know, he's legendary. But wait, there's more? That's what he came up with. And if, you know, the Vegematic Ginsu Knives, ever hear those things? You know, you know, Steve Rosen, I'll introduce in a second officially, but you know, um, Steve, when I was talking to Ron and we talked about the journey, when he was starting out on the streets of Chicago, he would go to Maxwell Street, he would wake up at like four in the morning, buy vegetables, take his folding table out, you know, set up all his stuff, um, and basically pitch people all day long. Um, and get vegetables and, and slice them and dice them in the vegematic. And some of the best pitchmen go on QVC and infomercials and sell their stuff. So anyways, by the way, if anyone knows anyone on QVC or any of these things, I think we're going to talk about Steve and the products. They would be perfect, perfect, perfect for that venue. So we're going to talk, and you could see it here actually, create on. But before I introduce Steve officially, this episode is brought to you by Rise25. And Rise25, you know, I started with my business partner, John Corcoran, and in, in the, over the past 10 years of podcasting, Steve, I feel like this is the best thing I've ever done because it helps me give to my relationships. It helps share amazing content. And by giving to my best relationships, we form, um, you know, different business relationships too, not just personal. And so I have, it's, I've seen no better way to give to my relationships. And Steve is one of those giving people too. So if you have questions about podcasting, we do help businesses launch and run their podcast. Go to rise25.com. There is a video of John and I explaining, you know, what you can do to, you know, get ROI with podcasting. And we do banter like an old married couple. So that people get a kick out of that. Um, this, you know, this has been long awaited. Uh, Steve Rosen is one of Creadon's co-founders, and you could see here right here with Magnetiles, um, and we'll talk about the different amazing stuff that they create. Um, and I always tell people, Steve, this is how I describe you. I go, what does Mattel, Magnetiles, Lord of the Rings, Star Trek, Willy Wonka, and Monopoly have in common? That's what I say. And I go, Steve, that's what, that's Steve, that's yeah, that's Steve. So he works directly with these many more licensors to put products and deals together. And throughout his 17 years in product development and the entertainment industry, Steve has worked with all the major film studios, licensing agencies, toy companies, creating high profile products, utilizing best of breed license IP. And he's executed numerous licensing deals. And most recently, he's brokered licensing deals with four leading children's entertainment brands. He runs, you know, software development teams across the globe. Cre you know, he did run software development teams across the globe as well. And check out createon.com. I don't even know how he got that domain. And a fun fact, which most people don't know about Steve, if you know him from a business perspective, cool. Um, if you leave him open for a three-pointer, <laughs> he makes about 90% from the field. So think Steph Curry meets Sunday pickup basketball. If you're five, <laughs> if you're five seven and a buck sixty, you better be able to drill that. So thanks for joining me. So really wait, wait, let's let's it. let's just stop. Real, yeah, my pleasure. But let let's talk about that real quick because yeah. you know I don't know about you, but like by the way, let me just say something. Right, and like we've been Steve, at this. There's four people right. watching right now. So if you're saying no one, who's gonna watch? So there are four people. <laughs> And then one person just dropped off after saying that. So go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't like for me, like I miss, I miss playing basketball like so much. It's one of the things like it's my, it's been like therapy for all these years and like having that camaraderie that we have on Sunday morning. And uh, honestly, in memory, in, in memory of Brian Olson, I wore the Brian Olson deep V neck for tonight too. <laughs> <laughs> just for him. Uh, but yeah, I miss it. But yes. Um, I want to start off with the journey, but, um, you know, lately you work with magnetiles. I don't know if you want to show a few and just talk about how that came about. 
Sure. So uh, the company that I am co-founder of is called Createon. We are a strategic partner of an amazing product called Magnetiles. You know, Magnetiles has been around for about 20 years. They, um, they are historically a preschool early learning product and they are the, I've always kind of called them the uh, Kleenex of the magnetic construction because they're ubiquitous with um, quality and everyone who has that's even true. If you have a knock, it's totally yeah, true. Even if, even if you have a knockoff, people call them magnetiles because it's a it's a great name and and they are a quality product. You never throw them away. They're kind of handed down from you know kid to kid. And you know as I've kind of built this business a little bit, my son who's six, he's he kind of moved on to Legos when he was young. He he loves them. It's like his favorite thing. And you know what we've done is is kind of brought him back to it, which has been great, especially as a father who watches his son build STEM stuff. But uh, so, anyways, this kind of started as a my son's best friend in preschool. Uh, his father and I took the kids to a park. And, you know, we had known each other and we got to talking and he's a, he's a, he's a talker and he's just like a, 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 a boatload of energy. And he's explaining to me how he's in this business group with the guys who serve magnetiles. I'm like, oh my God, we, we love magnetiles. And he's like, I, I think I have an idea of how to potentially partner with them because he, his expertise is in document security and printing. And mm. his idea, the way he pitched it to me was, I want to take magnetiles and customize them and print family photos on them. And I was like, awesome. I think that's so cool. And this is kind of what we, you know, what we came to. I mean, that's oh, nice. Sense. He's a karate champion. Watch out. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and so back in front. So this was his idea, right? And I said, that's, that's super cool. I love the idea. Um, we would totally buy those, but I see something totally different like i see lego and lego star wars like it, it you you get licenses you can you can build on them and then they become basically what legos are where legos i don't know if you know this but almost 17 years ago they were on the brink of bankruptcy oh yeah i heard about that recently i did not realize that though they, they partnered with um brands and spe specifically star wars and it changed their business they're the biggest toy company in the world by far yeah and i think that you know magnetile is a big brand they do great business they're great business people and they built this amazing product and it's an amazing brand and what we're trying to do is bring a whole new um you know, sell into different markets, different verticals. So what I brought was licensing and I have been in licensing for 13 years. Um, and at a company called scientific games, we made licensed slot machines and other slot machines. But, uh, so very serendipitously, I said to Aaron, my partner, I said, look, I'm going to the licensing show in May, come with me in Vegas. Like it's Vegas, right? Let's, let's have fun in regardless. And he's a spontaneous dude. And he, he like, let's go. So he brought his dad. They've been in this family business for 30, 40 years. And we went out there and Aaron can just sell. Like I always say to him, like he can sell ketchup popsicle, like a ketchup popsicle to woman in white gloves. Like he could just sell anything. It just, it just drives him. And I was like, look, let's go talk to some licensors. And before we knew it, like I, like I knew when pe we said magnetiles, you know, you could see the bulb go off in people's head. They're like, oh my God, I get it. Like we, you, if you can do what you're saying you're doing on magnetiles, you, you, you can open up this whole new market. So before I came home and I was so like fanatically inspired by this that I was like, look, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this with you. And I don't want a penny right now. Like, let's just go at this. Uh, you know, I was still working the other the scientific games full time. So, you know, I was working at night doing this. And before I knew it, like we had two licensing deals in place within three months. Mm -hmm. And mind you, we didn't have an artist or a product. Like we were selling air in many ways. We were selling an idea. Mm -hmm. And so we, we came up with some concept for boxes. The Magnetiles team took it to Target and Target bought it like sight on scene exclusively. So we're off and running, like to the races. So this was this is like one of our, our first products. This is uh, Eric Carl and Magnetiles. This yeah. is the Brown Bear Brown Bear. Um, and as you can see, you know, they're double-sided. We print on both sides. So we have like a build. And then we also have like an inside play pattern where it's an early education toy. And then, you know, we started coming up with our own builds. Uh, we've got a rocket ship that does phenomenal. So the outside is the rocket and the inside you can sequence the planets. And then like 
kind of, I just kept going at it and going at it. And I was, we, me and Aaron lived about a mile from each other and we would go on these like long walks and just talk and like build a business plan. And, you know, he had the foresight to, to really go after these Magnetiles got, um, founders and say, look, we, we, we think we can do this. We do it together. And they, they, they love the idea. And it's really been like a prove it to us situation with them. And, and we've delivered on everything we've said. And then, you know, sort of the feather in the cap right now is we, we have a licensing deal with Sesame Street and we're coming out with three new Sesame Street builds in August. And wow. that's, it, it hasn't even been a year. And, and we were in Target exclusively. In fact, Sunday we go in, we've earned 500 targets now. We're going to go to 1,000. And then we go nationwide with the Eric Carl products wow. uh, in the fall. That's amazing. Is there, did you yeah. see a risk early on of, you know, selling air and be like, listen, why deal with you? Let's go right to magnet house. Is um, there a risk there or not really? No, I didn't think so. I mean, look, no. there was a risk for me personally, right? I mean, I've got two kids and we had just moved into this house in Deerfield and, you know, I, I, I have a, I had a steady, good job. I mean, a really good job that I loved that I was, you know, entrenched in, in the culture. I, I helped build the place um at wms which became scientific games and i just i saw this opportunity and, and i don't know i mean I, you don't get a, I, I never it's a leap yeah it yeah it's a leap but like you have these moments right and like this was a moment for me that i knew i had to sort of grab and capture because i didn't know if i was ever gonna get anything like this ever again because look i was dealing with this my my co-founder who is just a whirlwind of passion and energy and we just played off each other so well and he's become you know i mean outside of the fact that we're we're founding this company he's become a great friend and a mentor and you know it's a family business and family business so different from my corporate structure life right i mean that these two worlds could be any more different but no no to to me the risk was not doing it honestly yeah. it seems like a perfect combination someone who's an expert at printing and someone who's expert at licensing with a product that is like the Kleenex of that particular niche. Absolutely. It's, it's like the perfect storm in a good way. Yeah. And, and the other piece of this perfect storm was that the founders of Magnus House, Mike and Rudy Milana, let us sort of run with this with, with a leash in some ways, but they let us run with this and they, and they saw, they saw it too. I mean, these guys, they're really smart guys. I mean, Rudy Milana is, you know, I mean, this guy goes to the, toy fair and he's like the he's like Willy Wonka I mean people just want to be around him he's Mr. Magnetile and uh and people just love fanatically love the product you know this was my first toy fair in New York in February and the Magnetile's booth is in a small I mean it's in the Javits Center it's massive Mattel's got this massive booth you know Hasbro massive booth you know we were in a 10 by 10 booth constantly packed right mm -hmm. where People just came in and saw what they were doing, right? I mean, because people are just going to buy magnetiles, but they saw what we were doing, and they're like, "Oh my god! Like this has changed everything, right?" Yeah, I mean, we we could. I mean, so yeah, it's, it has. It's barely been a year, and and here we are today. It seems, you know, when you say it, Steve, it seems so obvious, right? It's like, how was someone not? It's like the best ideas sometimes are like, how was someone not doing that before? Right. Right. And, and, and there's a lot of competition in the magnetic construction. So mag formers is a big competitor of theirs. They had a brand, so they were working with Paw Patrol, but they just had these like little stickers on there and it really meant nothing. So what we always said when we started this thing is we didn't want to be what is known in the licensing industry as sticker slappers. Like hmm. we didn't want to just slap something on. It's there. like we the worst it. insult you could give to a licensor. It's like you're a sticker right. slapper. Yeah. So we, we wanted funny. to do something different and we wanted to take advantage, not only take advantage of these brands, but this amazing children's IP like Eric Carl. And, and look, I, I read Brown Bear and Hunter Caterpillar with my kids before this even happened. But, you know, once we started getting the product out there, I just didn't realize the magnitude of who he is and what he's done for children, right? Like it's these books, I mean, they still sell, Brown Bear, I think sells a million copies a year still. That's amazing. And that, that book is- We have it, longer. yeah. Yeah, of course. Very Hungry Caterpillar is 50 years old. I mean, it's wow. been around forever and people love it and, you know, it, it's all about timing in many ways. And I think we timed this right. It wasn't on purpose, but 
we just all things kind of can combine. So we have Eric Carl, Sesame Street, and you could print. People can send in their family pictures and things like that. Yeah, so that that's my magnetiles dot uh, off of create on where you can build and put your own family photos in them on the right. Create and display, learn and play on the other side is where you're going to get all of our build sets as well as. So our, this is um, like there's numbers. Like what else? Yep. So that's yeah. the bus. That's the one, two, three school bus. So you can build a bus, right? And yeah. then you, and the inside play pattern is all the numbers and the functions. So you can learn math. We hmm. have a schoolhouse where you can build the school. And in the inside, there's is all the, the rocket ship. And there's the rocket. And the inside is all the planets. Uh, we have a huh. castle where you can build the castle, right? And look, the thing yeah. is, is it, it's very similar to Lego, right? Where you have all these Legos and they all kind of get mashed together, right? But now, all these magnetiles that you have that are sort of, you know, plain, clear colors. Now you can have Elmo on one of them, right? Like you, it, it just, it yeah. is one of those things, right? Like where kids are going to take them, build whatever they want to yeah. build with it. But now they've got character spaces or they could have themselves on them. Right? Yeah. It seems limitless. So what, what's next? What, what other, if someone is like, Oh, what's the next on the docket? Like this company or this brand should be like calling you. For magnet for partying with magnet house. Sure. I mean, look, I mean, I think the gold standard of licensing right now is Disney. I mean, are, are we there yet? I don't know. Mm. Um, you know, we, we definitely, we could do something with them. Um, you know, we're still relatively new and we got to, I, I know we still have to prove ourselves and we got a long way to go here. What's next for us though, I believe is customization. So like to me, what, what is going to be next for us and what we're going to look to do in 20, 2021 is customize these toys. So mm. like one of the things that we had done, you know, obviously the kids were out of school. My son, you know, everyone's kids have been pulled out of school. The one, two, three school bus has windows in it, right? So it's got all these windows. So for my son's kindergarten teacher, we put the kids in the windows and made it the mm. Miss V school bus right Very and now cool. it's, it's an it's an amazing toy um and it's a it's kind of a centerpiece and a collectible a little bit um i believe that we will and get to sports stadiums because we can build a basketball court um, mm. we can build a hockey rink um i believe we'll we'll get to that and i believe that you said it i mean it, they are the my partner has always said this is paper so you can do whatever you want with it and um I think we got a lot of great ideas coming. Ooh. The next one that launches yeah. outside of Sesame Street yeah. um, was sort of a stroke of, of genius too, because these these um, this this technology that we use for our printing capabilities can raise the ink, so we can do Braille technically if we wanted to, and, and mm. I do believe we'll get there. But we made like sun catchers on the tiles, so like you can raise the 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 ink so it can catch paint, and we're gonna sell kits of tiles with Sesame Street and Eric Carle. Um, on it and we're going to sell these little paint tubes with it and the kids can use it to paint in whatever colors they want it dries and now it becomes another tile that goes in your collection wow that's pretty cool yeah it was actually, it's that's amazing um you know right here it's actually funny so i the the first thing started baby einstein and they grew it to 20 million five employees i think and then sold to disney Yep. Or something and, like, like that. Yeah. So, who else is the gold standard? Considered it's like high up there with Disney. Who else is like In licensing uh, to shoot for? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that we're looking at. I mean, we we look obviously, you know, Sesame Street to me, the Q score, everyone knows what Sesame Street is. Everyone knows what Elmo is. You know, we. We were partnering with them because I, I believe that they're number one an amazing brand, but they're they're coming back. I mean, they've got a movie coming out next year. They you can see on CNN they did a whole thing about COVID with the and they, they did something about you know standing for for against racism. So they're they're really oh yeah, it was forefront. amazing. Yeah. yeah, so they're they're a great brand that I just think needed a little bit of a, a kick there. They've got this show on uh, HBO Max called the Not So Late Show with Elmo. So we're, we're doing a product with that because we can sort of turn on a dime and create a product. And we're going to, we're going to launch like a, a, a set that correlates to the show. So they're, they're just doing a ton of stuff and we're going to ride a wave with them. And that, that to me is like our next year. I think we'll probably look at one brand a year, would be my guess, mm -hmm. to, to sort of add to our collection. Um, but there's a ton of great brands. And, and now we're to the point where like people have started to come to us. To right. say, all right, well, what's next? What What do you think about this, or what do you think about that? And we're We're still sort of that's a good place to be. 
It's a great um, place to be. Talk about when you approach a brand before like you have the street cred like you do, what do you say to them? Like, what do you say to Sesame Street to be like, to let them see the vision in the light? Honest, honestly, with Sesame Street, they, they saw it immediately. I mean, they yeah. were, they, we, I had a conversation with them and they said, they knew every single person on that licensing staff knew what magma tiles were. They right. just never knew that you could do anything with them, right? Like they never right. even thought that there would be any opportunity because they've done things with Duplo, which is like a, a younger brand's Lego, and they've had other opportunities there. Yeah. But this was something that you, it, you know, magma tiles is a big brand, right? Like it's a brand right. unto itself. So it's it's co almost co-branded in many ways, right? It's Sesame Street and Magnetiles. Yes. And that. yes. Just, just like, Ma like look, Magnetiles and Brown Bear and the world of Eric Carl, right? right? Like to me, this was just a no-brainer, right? Um, you know, well, to Eric you Carl, it is, but sometimes you have to share a little bit of the vision. Yeah, with, no, definitely. It, yeah. And, and look, I, to me, the pitch was to every single one of these licensors was you have Lego and you have Lego Star Wars. And and it's all ubiquitous. It's all one of the. And you walk, you drop a magnetile yeah. and walk out of the room. Like, and we walk out of the room. Yeah, do you want to be magnetile um, in Sesame Street? Let's do this. That's right. So it, it, it and look, we had to. Well, that's, we had you know, to Steve. Get... That's a key point, right? So like part of when you go to them, you show them a vision of something else that worked really well, and then relate it yeah. to to yours. Right. Look, for instance, Hasbro, right? We, you know, maybe we'll do something with Hasbro. I have a prior relationship there. They want to see a three year, like your forecast. Well, we don't have any forecasts right now, right? All right. we know is, is th there's a lot of interest. Target took something exclusively. We don't, we're just not there yet. And, and that's why, like, to me, Disney is far, not far. They want to see, off. they want to see like success past, you know, past success or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Um, but some of these, you know, Eric Carl has 120 licensors, right? I mean, so they have a ton of licenses that they've, they've given out and they've worked with. When they saw this, they jumped on it immediately. Yeah. And we really haven't had a lot of like pushback per se, which, yeah. you know, I, I want failure along the way. This is not yeah. all going to be, uh, roses and, and, yeah. and what kittens, other, like will. give an example of another Eric Carl license. Like what else do they put their stuff on? Oh, you name it. Because uh, not they, all of them uh, are going to be like hits out of the gate, right? So no, like, no, no, no. Yeah, I mean, look, they've got Night Lights. They've got Plush. They've got, got – th actually, one of the really cool ones that we saw at the show this year is um, a, a guy who actually farms caterpillars that turn into butterflies. So he wow. sells – he sells that to nature. It's an Eric or whatever. Carl cut, but and it's a, it's a, it's a very hungry caterpillar butterfly that turns oh. into a butterfly. So they, I mean, they've got a ton of them. They do juice boxes and lunch bags. And I mean, they've mm. got everything, right? Because it's such a big brand. Sesame street is, is more, I'd say they're a little bit pickier. I mean, because they, they are a non-for-profit. I mean, they're Sesame street is a not-for-profit company. I mean, it, that's just what it is. So, um, they, they, they're a little bit more selective, I would say. Um, but you know, look, I keep saying, I mean, every time that I have pitched this to a licensor, they get it immediately and they're, well, how do we do this? Right. Build a bear is an, another example, right? You know, and there is this piece where STEM is hot, right? I mean, STEM toys are hot right now. So to get on board with a brand name like Magnetiles is beneficial for, for both parties. Yeah. Let's work back for a second. Sure. Okay. Create on scientific games. Tell me a story where you got pushed back, right? And this is, you know, I just want to point out, it's an overnight success after 13 years, right? It's like you've been in this industry, you've built up this relationship. It's not like... You just show up like, hey, I think we should do licensing. Like you have uh, an expertise in this that you built up over a decade, right? And so yep. it's kind of all that stuff comes together. So work back to Scientific Games. What were some of the stuff you were working on there? Uh, so, I mean, worked with every single movie studio. Our big brands were Willy Wonka, The Chocolate Factory, Wizard of Oz. Um, and then sort of my, my big products that I sort of oversaw, you know, from start to finish were the Simpsons and, mm -hmm. um, and James Bond. So like, those were the two that, <clears throat> that were like sort of the feather in my fro, if you will. What um, kind of, what kind of stuff do you do with the Simpsons? So that's, that's, <laughs> you know, that's a, uh, that was a tough one. I mean, they look, they've got success upon success. They are, 
you deal with brands all the time, or at least I did, right? You have brands that are very protective over their intellectual property, right? That that's what they have. And, you know, the, the great story with the Simpsons was, is we went out to LA, we were, we made this pitch, we had this PowerPoint, I, I had this designer, this guy named Jamie Van, who's an amazing talent. And we went out there and we showed Fox and some of the people from uh, the Simpsons what we were going to do. It was cool. They all shook hands, left. They called us the next day and they said, look, we want you to come back next week. We want you to do that again at the Fox studio and we want, and Mac, Mac Rainey is going to come. Great. So we go there. What, what were make, you pitching exactly? Just to give me a sense. What we were going to do for the first game. We'd already had the brand. We already negotiated. This was for a slot machine? What was it? Yeah, for the slot machine. Slot machine. Okay. So, yeah. So first Simpsons slot machine ever. They had never been in the slot industry. And and look, in the, in the slot industry, brands are everywhere, right? Like everything has been done in the slot machine industry, but a few hadn't, right? The Simpsons was one of them. So we were, we kind of got there and we were, uh, <laughs> so anyways, we went, went back out to LA and we, we I opened up my computer and we're about to start this meeting. This woman sits down. I didn't know who she was. There were like 20 people in the room and all of a sudden she, she stands up and she goes, I'm Matt Graining's assistant. Uh, Matt will not be coming to this meeting today. He doesn't agree with the creation of a slot machine. She literally stood up, walked out, tried to go out the door, but it was locked. So she was fighting to get out the door. <laughs> she finally gets out the door and we all kind of look at each other like, nope, okay, now what? <laughs> so that, that product in particular was probably the most challenging product ever created because they wanted control over so much of it as we went on. They didn't understand we were creating a gambling machine. They wanted to create a video game and we were creating a gambling experience, right? Which is what slot machines are. They are, there's story there, but it's not, you know, these are people who are looking to ride a wave and win money in many cases. So that, that was a tough one. The other one, James Bond, we had Well, Chase let's stick on that one for a second, I, uh, Steve. Uh, how did you overcome that? The lady walking out being like, he doesn't agree with this. Well, apparently Matt didn't own all of the license, so the deal had already been done. But we had to work with their team. I mean, their team ended up creating a bunch of art for us. They did. Uh, it was a whole – it took almost three years to get that game out. And most games we do take between a year and a year and a half to make a product. Wow. So it, it is – it was not pretty. And it, But look, I learned a lot, right? Like every, every step along the way as I've worked with a brand, some are difficult, some are easy, but I've learned – along the way of how to deal with all these people. And look, every single one of these brands, I, I try and make a connection with someone there within, within the team, within the brand team at the company. The perfect example for me was it, with James Bond, right? James Bond was the, the next big brand that we went after. It had never, they had never done a slot machine before they had, you know, we finally came to terms with it and it took 15 years. Um, and, I finally got, you know, I was the, the brand representative for scientific games and they had a representative from Eon Productions, which owns James Bond. And I, me and, and this guy, his name is Michael Tavares. We, we just became friends. I mean, I, we, I had no other, we had no other choice, but because we were going to be locked in this thing for seven years together, creating products, we had to explain what we do, right? So it's, it's slot one-on-one. How do you make, what is a slot machine? I mean, you're explaining all these things to these people as you go while they're, they're in the movie, you know, space and assets and all this stuff. And we needed so much to create these, these games because they had become these big cinematic experiences. I mean, they really became triple, I'd say triple A video games in many cases. That's what the size and scope of these products. And we, I mean, we were creating four games at, at once i mean it was it was brutal but if, if i didn't have that relationship to lean on with michael at Eon, i wouldn't have gotten these we would have gotten these games done um so that's that's the one thing that i always stress in in these negotiations and when we're creating products it doesn't matter if it's you know video games slot machines magnet tiles if you don't have that one relationship with the licensor you're in trouble because you need stuff approved you you may be in an a time crunch in many cases and you need to be able to go to someone and say look hey i need this and i need this fast and i i have been able to cultivate those relationships over the years and, and that's i believe probably one of my strengths how do you choose how did you decide okay simpsons because again like 
I'm trying to think. There's too many options here. There's so many ways you could take this. So many like brands and licensing deals. How did you decide? Okay, let's zero in and focus on Simpsons. Well, look, Jeremy, we had 60 brands at one point. I mean, we were doing games for the Beach Boys. We did a game about Cher. We had Michael Jackson. I mean, we had um, – we did a Ferris Bueller's Day Off game, which was my personal favorite. Um, Gremlins, Austin Powers. I mean, you name it. It, it, it was done. Um, mm. The Simpsons, I mean, really, it was, a, it was a passion project for a lot of people around the office, and we also thought that – Look, when you're walking a slot, you're when you're walking a slot floor, it's bells and whistles, it's lights. I mean, it, it, it's it is sensory overload, right? So to see a beacon up top where we put this gold donut, right? You automatically knew that was the Simpsons. So maybe you would just go try that, right? And mm -hmm. then once you sit down, then it was the game developer's job to create a great product and a great experience and a great map experience. But yeah, I mean, a lot of it was just, you know, we did some research testing and stuff like that, but it, it was the passion of a designer or a design team. Here's what we can do. And, and they came up with some great ideas and we went after it. And so back I up, left the yeah, slot, by the way, I, the last, the last slot machine that I saw at what G2E, which is the global gaming expo, which I was like, look, we as a, as an industry have hit rock bottom was uh, the Sir Mix a Lot slot machine. Right? That's <laughs> when I knew that this thing was almost over. Uh, the name of the bonus in the um, in the slot machine was I like big bucks. All right, there you go. Nice pun there. Yeah. So is it declined? What's the industry like now? I mean, obviously, well, you know, Vegas is kind of shut down for the past few months. But besides that, before that. Yeah, it's a tough in, it's a tough industry right now, man. That that I I think I I didn't know what I was doing when I left. In fact, I would have I would have stayed. I would have stayed this my is entire the right career company, there. Right? Yeah, Science. that's right. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, man, slot, slot. <laughs> the casinos are a, a breeding ground for germs. I would say. <laughs> uh, so that it's it's look. I you know I I'm still very close with a lot of people there. I wish them nothing but success, and I I. I you know, I, it's just, it's going to be a rough road the next couple of years until there's some sort of therapeutic or, yeah. you know, vaccine to for get people back in the casinos. Having said that, I saw a video on Twitter a couple of days ago, someone walking through the Cosmo and it looked like nothing had ever happened. So, you know, who knows? Um, I would just say these casinos are going to take as much measures as they can. They don't want to be the, the people that are going to be, have that first outbreak potentially of COVID. And, um, but there's been a lot of consolidation in, in that space. The big we we while I was there 15, 13 years we went through three mergers. I mean, it, you know, everyone was eating everyone, and they mm. took two two of the biggest players between Scientific Games and Bally, combined them, and thought they were going to get you know forty percent market share because it was twenty and twenty, and it just didn't work out that way. Mm. Um, so and there's been a lot of new competition there and different markets, and it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tough space right now. I think a lot of that stuff will go online. Sports betting will obviously, you know, come up, and that that's a big part of what scientific games will do and online play. So, when you're doing uh, deals, you know, Steve, what kind of people do you need in place? We were talking before we hit record about, you know, uh, patent attorneys. Like, shout out to Rich Goldstein. He actually, you know, we were talking about Rich actually before we, hit, and he actually has already liked this, so he's watching this. Steve, hey, right Rich. now, Rich Goldstein. Hey, hey buddy. Um, and talking, you know, I talked to him earlier today about um, patents and licensing and all that stuff. What type of professionals do you need to have in place to do this type of deal? Because it's a yes, there's a lot yeah, of parts here. Tons. Um, so I would say I was probably more on the business end. Then we then absolutely had multiple attorneys on these deals. These were huge deals that would go through for multi-million dollars. So they, you know, dot, these deals would take in some cases, six months to a year to get some of these deals done. Um, hey, Rich, I saw that. It's cool. Um, 
And uh, um, and then outside of that, an entire game development team to do the pitch, right? I mean, we would have to get put together. Look, what cabinet is it going to go on to? What is the art going to look like? What is the inspiration? If it's a music artist, what what music do we need? Do, do we have to then sub-license that? Do we have to sub-license an actor per se? I mean, we did Top Gun in like 2006 without Tom Cruise because he just didn't want to be involved in it. So we did it with the other cast members. So there was a ton, I mean, a great game designer, um, obviously, and Scientific Games has the best game designers, I would say, in, in the business. Uh, Jeff Nauman, who did Rampage. I don't know if anyone knows the original Rampage. I mean, oh, Jeff yeah. Nauman, yeah. Yeah, Jeremy Hornick, Jamie Van. I mean, all these guys, that have, Joel Jaffe, all these guys have been there forever. And they are, they're the best in the business. Mike Mastro Pietro, uh, a lot of guys. Who do you consider some of your mentors? I know you, I've talked to Roger Sharp. Um, he's an amazing guy. The um, Godfather Pinball. Yeah. And there's even, a, what is it? Drunken something. There's an oh, episode. Drunk History. Yeah. Drunk was, History. There's an episode about him in yeah. Drunk History. You have to watch right. it. I, I yeah. embedded it in my Roger Sharp um, interview. You, it, yeah. It's. It's amazing. You know, there's a drunk, if you know you've made it when there's a drunk history episode about you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Roger, I would say, was the guy who taught, taught me how to build relationships. I mean, this guy really? had legitimately, by the time he was gone in 20, I don't know, 12, 13, he legitimately had a physical Rolodex on his desk. It, he, he wouldn't even go to the computer. It was this spinning Rolodex that you would have to get numbers out of. Um, an amazing guy taught me a ton. Uh, another guy at Scientific what Games. What did he teach Bennett. you about building relationships? Roger yeah. was uh, very hands-on with everybody. I mean, it was a hello, a handshake. He always brought candy to meetings. He's he was the, known nice the candy guy. man. He's yeah. the sweetest man ever. Um, but he would cultivate these 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 relationships. And look, I mean, I you know, I I think I've been doing that forever just because of my parents too, that, that they're like that as well. My mom is a choral director here in Buffalo Grove and she's been, you know, she's got 50 people in her chorus group and then my parents have been doing that forever. So I kind of came out of me a little bit, but um, yeah, Roger, Roger was really the one. And I think he really showed me how to be calm, cool and collected when dealing with a licensor, because you're dealing with someone's intellectual property, which yeah. in many cases is baby. worth, yeah, it, with the Simpsons, it's worth billions. Like le, that, that property is worth billions of dollars, and they're going to treat, and that's what they have, right? And that's their currency, so they're not going to let you screw it up. And uh, and we dealt with that through many licenses over the years, with Hasbro and Monopoly, and some licenses are going to let you do more, and some let you, some aren't going to let you do a lot. But uh, yeah, that Roger for sure. Um, you know, I, I had another mentor there too, in particular off the top of my head at Scientific Games named uh, Brad Rose and Phil Gelber. Brad was pure energy, once again, could could command a room, um, was an amazing guy. He taught me so much. And and like along my career, I've just had these cheerleaders, I would say. And like mm. Brad was absolutely one of those guys who just pushed and pushed and pushed me because, you know, I, when I got Scientific Games, I was legitimately pulling lights out of these butt out of like the button panels because they used to be these little leds and that's what i did when i started there i mean so i i had to work my way up and uh and then another guy phil gelber who um what came from the video game industry but he's a he's a lifer at scientific games and he has been through so much i mean so much uh, bullshit over the years they're dealing with so much churn and change and I wear my heart on my sleeve and he did not. He was calm, cool, and collected all the time and measured about everything he did. Um, you know, my dad, you know, I, 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 uh, my dad has been one of these guys who just, he's, he's a worker. I mean, he just works hard. Even today, he would, I don't know if he can retire. I mean, he found golf, right, which is great. <laughs> but um, he, he just loves working and he just, you know, he always was taught me how to be resourceful and, and how to do a job and show up. Um, and, what does he uh, do? My, he's a CPA. Okay. He's an, uh, an accountant. And, um, you know, I, I talk about this like right now, you know, a year in with, with Aaron Singer, my, my business partner. I mean, this guy is just servant leadership, man. I mean, it walks in the door every morning. What can I do for you? 
what, what can I do? And that he's the boss because like be called the boss, right? Like he's, he's definitely funding all this and he's on top of everything, but he wants to know what he can do for you to make your day easier. And, mm -hmm. you know, also along the way, I, I got to say like all these people, as much as they've been cheerleaders for me, have let me kind of do my thing and learn as I go and make mistakes because that's been key for me along the way is learning from the mistakes that I've made in my career in business and and it's important and at, you know it's at create on we've made mis some mistakes but like there's been success i'm kind of sometimes i'm waiting for that other shoe to drop which is which is probably just me in many ways because i i have a lot on the line here because i want this to work so badly but it, it's very important to me to, to learn from whatever mistakes that i've made over the years yeah i want to go back also to um kind of the start you moved yeah. to LA. I mean, the, the real reason I wanted to do this interview is I want to know how to win at slot machines. I mean, is there yeah, like- Yeah, sure. Don't play. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my advice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's not the answer I was looking for. Um, yeah. the, you uh, moved to LA. So this was after yeah. college? Yeah. So Why did you go Indiana, to LA? Indiana University. Uh, go Hoosiers. Um, wanted to get in a film. I mean, to me, that was like my passion always. I love film. I love watching movies. I, the, the, the making of things has always interested me more than anything. I watch a ton of documentaries on just like creation of things. Like I, I like to create at heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, so after, I, after leaving Indiana, I, I, I had a cousin who lived in Los Angeles, like in a, he was a doctor and didn't really know him all that well. And he, he like my dad called him, was like, hey, can Steve stay with you <laughs> if he for a job out there and he was like sure and i'm like all right great so on a whim it was like something i would have never done like i would i would say like i'm probably somewhat risk averse but to me this was now or never and if i was going to do this i was going to do it so i moved out there um and man it was rough i mean i didn't know a lot of people i mean this was like in 2003 so there wasn't like social networks i mean i had a couple of buddies that from college so i had some friends and some guys from high school that i knew out in san diego one in santa barbara and um i i just started going out and i, was, I remember like faxing my resume to like these different places and like i i just like what, what you did know, you study in school telecommunications design okay. and production so i was doing okay. production work yeah so um so finally, I got a, I got a call from this company, which was called Maverick Films, which and which was Madonna's film company. Hmm. So, I I went in for the interview, and she it was an internship, right, and no pay. And I I walked in. I was so out of my element. Like I had like you know nothing. I mean like I didn't know anything. And uh, she, she called me like two days later. She's like, look, when can you start? You can do script coverage. You sit at a desk. And you can get coffee and you know be an intern. So internship you know starts and you know, i'm making friends and it's it's great i mean i'm in i'm like in the business like we're we're like make they're making a movie like it's madonna's film company upstairs is maverick records with alanis morissette and you know this guy guy o'siri who's running the whole thing and this guy's, i think he manages you too now and uh so they're making this movie agent cody banks which is with uh, frankie moon and larry duff so that movie had come out and it done well and um I was so the CEO of Maverick Films guy's name was Mark Morgan, who ended up becoming very successful as well. He uh, he had an assistant. She she I think she called Madonna at home in London, and she didn't realize the time difference, if I recall. And I remember she fired her, like she fired her on the phone. And literally the next day, I took over as this, guy, as this guy's assistant because I, I was probably just the next man up. I was just what? Sitting, so like before I knew it, she I was, woke her up was, too early and then she just goes, boom. No, it was like in the middle of the night. Oh, middle of the night. Okay. So, yeah. So the next thing I know, like I'm this guy's assistant and I'm, you know, getting it. I'm like, I mean, it was crazy. I, I mean like shit that like, I never thought I would do. I was doing, you know, we were having great meetings. Jessica Simpson would come in. Like we had Amy Smart in from meetings. Like it was great. It was amazing. But like, I, like all my buddies from Indiana and from Illinois and everyone was home. Right. So like, that's like, I missed that. And, you know, at some point, I mean, the, the, the crazy part with the serendipity of all this was like, uh, I had a guy who from Indiana, his name is Mike Farah and he was going to come out and we were going to look for an apartment together. And because I was going to stay out there finally, like my grandma got sick 
and I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to come back. I'm going to see what's going on and then I'll, I'll come back. And finally I was like, look, I'm, I'm not coming back. I'm just going to go back to Chicago. Mike ends up getting a place out there. Mike Farah today is the CEO of funnierdie.com. He's one of, really? the, one of the most powerful people wow. in Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, and an amazing guy and someone I, I keep in touch with today and he's helped me with some things over the years and we did an anchorman game and he's close with will ferrell so he helped me with some stuff but will you ferrell know, co-founded the, is that how it works yeah, will ferrell founded yeah, that, yeah. yeah him and adam mckay so yeah. it's uh yeah it's about time you know so I, I came back and i went to midway games which did moral combat and i knew i like wanted to stay in entertainment and I got to stay there for two years and meet some unbelievable people at Midway Games. I mean, the, the guy who created Mortal Kombat, his name is Ed Boon. I mean, he was just this unbelievable guy. Uh, you know, um, this guy named Adam Boyce who runs uh, Iron Galaxy. This guy, John Demi. All these guys from Midway were like, ended up becoming so utterly successful. My boss was a guy named Matt Booty. He runs, um, he runs Microsoft Studios, which runs you know minecraft today and but like midway was just so poorly run at the time i think they're doing a documentary about it that comes out soon i, I can't wait to see it um uh, but what, it, did, what did midway games do uh home console games mortal kombat okay nfl blitz um slugfest nba ballers i mean they were doing a ton of games for yeah. xbox and and uh, playstation so i i was an assistant there for the, the guy who ran the studio again and then all of a sudden um serendipity right like w somebody needed an associate producer but it was going to have to be in san diego so they asked me if i wanted to go out to san diego i was like no i, I just i don't want to go back out there like I'm, I'm comfortable i think i had a girlfriend at the time signed like, to the games. weather is too nice i want to be in chicago yeah, yeah. Where well, i would not want to be here well, freeze it's, my butt it's off. Below i would be like sign me up no i'm just kidding. i should have yeah. um but uh so anyways WMS and, and Midway used to be one in the same. So they were across the street from each other on Roscoe. And I knew someone at WMS and they were doing slot machines. I literally one day just, I, I called him, I walked across the street from the interview. I got the job. I was there for 13 years. We wow. built an amazing culture at Scientific Games and um, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. And, and to me, the experience is what led me to where I am today. Were you getting burnt out in LA? What What do you think pushed you out of there? Because it seems like you were you were in front of some of the the people and the things that you wanted or thought that you wanted at the time. Yeah, right? look, I one hundred percent, and I think about that. I, I I mean that that it was a moment for me, right? Like I I definitely think about that a ton. Um, you know, for me, I, it has always been about friends and family. And yeah. like living away from my folks and, and watching my sister, she's five years younger than me, grow up was just, it was hard. It was too hard, right? I and mean, it was just, you know, my parents and my, my family is everything. And, you know, I think just being away from them for, for the, that long, and it wasn't even that long, but just the thought of, you know, not coming back, but building a life out there. And, and I started and I, I tried and I'm like, you know, I had a girlfriend and, I thought I thought I was gonna be out there forever. I really did. And then when my grandma got sick and I came home and I was with friends and I saw my family and I was like, I, I just don't think I I don't think I can go back. And and I right. just you know my and look my dad you know funded me to go there and and let me pursue a dream and you know they probably didn't want me to go in many ways but you know they you know it was another life lesson that you gotta let your kids kind of you know grow their grow and 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 spread their wings and that's what they let me yeah. do. First of all, Steve, I want to thank you. You always are so generous and everyone should check out createon.com. I have two last questions, but as you can see, um, check it out. Um, Please I mean, do. Yeah, and a target near you and online. Target you, you're on, on Amazon also and on That's your right. website. Um, yeah. I always ask two questions. One, what's been a low moment challenge point where you had to push through and then on the flip side, what's been a proud moment for you um because this journey is kind of a winding road uh what's yeah. been a challenge point i have this very vivid memory of flying back from when my grandma was sick from like chicago i think no i left i was leaving chicago and going back to los angeles and i i was in a middle seat 
and that's a four hour flight. I mean, that's, that's a long flight. And I just remember sitting sort of probably for over three hours with my head in my hands, sort of like down. I, I don't know what the other people next to me thought, but I was just like, I couldn't, like, I couldn't believe I was leaving my family again. Like I, I going back there, I think, I think I landed and I may have called my mom. I was like, look, I, I I'm sorry. Like I, I'm coming home. Like, I just, mm. I don't want to, I don't want to be here anymore. You, you know, I want to be, you know, back in Chicago where it's not even as much as it was comfortable. It's just like, I, why would I want to live without them and watching all these people around me, you know? And I, look, I have been in this place where I, this, this thing hits me and I think about it with my son all the time where it's, it's this line, it's show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And I would, I have this amazing group of friends from high school and college that I wouldn't trade for anything. And we all have kind of come up and I'm, all these guys that I know and love so much are so successful in, in business and in their lives. And we are just so utterly connected that to, to never, to not really be able to see them at times outside of Zoom and getting to see you, although I do miss, your, you, miss you in 3D on Sundays. Uh, <laughs> it, it, um, Oh, I, I think going back and, and that was like my low point, but then, you know, I, I kind of came out of it at some point. I was like, like, I'm, I'm just coming home. Um, the proud moment for me, like I, you know, I, I've always built things for companies, right? Like I, I have built, you know, slot machines and video games and, and, you know, seeing them on the floor after you're done with them and putting in all this hard work is very, very ins inspiring. And it, it, it's this great feeling, right? Cause it's entertainment. You're giving people entertainment, but man, when I walked into target and saw this product sitting on a shelf, mm. I, I, that was one of the most emotional moments for me because I mean, I never would have imagined that that would have anything like this would have ever happened to me. And like I, we did, I did this with a small group of people, you know, a couple of production guys, and um, you know, this amazing artist Amanda Lirius and, and Aaron, and, and we we did it together. And to see that, and and like, and in a couple of weeks here, I'm sorry, on Sunday, Father's Day, it's going to go out to five or more stores. We're going to have an end cap at Target, you know, to walk my kids into there and to see what what I'm doing. Like nothing will ever top that. Right. Like, I, you know, it, it, it will, it, is it going to be successful? I believe it's going to be right. We will get back to normalcy at some point and people will walk target and see this thing. Right. But <laughs> as long as, as right. I don't care if my kids have to go into target with a mask and my, and my wife and my family to see what we have done and what I have really, you know, it took one email, you know, on a whim to this guy that I didn't even know that to set this thing in motion. Uh, I, and, and that's all it takes sometimes. Right. It's just that, that one you know, communication or whatever. And that to me, uh, I will never forget. And we've got this amazing picture, like people did done some articles on what we had done, but sharing that moment with Aaron and then, you know, soon here with my family, like that's, that's amazing. And that's something I will never forget. Everyone check out createon.com. Steve, amazing. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you so much, Jim. I really appreciate this. I love what you do. Thanks. Take care.